So my name is Marjorie and I'm the founder of Luxo. My name is Fabian Vogelsteller and I'm also the founder of Luxo and uh, played a role in the film space in the last three years. Luxo is an industry specific blockchain for the fashion and design industry. Yeah, so the idea is to make a specific uh, blockchain for a specific industry and in this case the fashion design industry to solve problems and, and basically the main problem they have is counterfeit so solving counterfeit problem is uh, one huge first step stone and then all of these interesting use cases they come when you have digital identities of objects and users and companies. Right. I just think like the industries are not ready to be open kind of like their data and their information to the public. I think they feel more comfortable when they're working together with like-minded people. I mean, the main reason is actually that the, the main net is full, so the, uh, the, the load is kind of um, at its max. So this person is load over multiple blockchains makes sense. And um, also, like Marjorie said, it's, it's grouping people around their own network. So basically you create the network effect and you create the, the growth of the network and also the, the traction increases on their own network. So it also is very inviting for the industry participants and, and members to, to join their own network. Ethereum is a very great place for innovation and where all the interesting things are, are happening. Um, but companies, like Marjo said, are feeling rather uncomfortable to go into the Wild West right now. And in the future, uh, probably Ethereum will act as like the main public intersection between many blockchains, where the more decentralized and really decentralized uh, new systems are running. Well, definitely counterfeit. I think one of like the big value in fashion and in design is uniqueness. And if you kind of can certify that uniqueness and be sure that whatever you are buying is real, it was made by the person that's supposed to be made it with the right materials in the right place, it just kind of increases the value and it gives you the opportunity of creating those truly unique items for the first time. Yeah, and on top of that, you can uh, create completely new use cases which you couldn't have before because uh, couldn't have before because currently you have the physical item and that's all you got when you when you buy your item. But now you can actually have also the digital item, which can give you access, it can give you rewards, benefits, status, uh, belonging to a group or belonging to a, a specific uh, level or rank or whatever. So all of these kind of gamification things we can now build around the physical objects. At the same time, it also allows brands to reach the customers in a more direct way, They're actually able to transfer them the tokens, ownership, um, um, they can transfer them access, they can transfer them invites, uh, discounts, whatever people can make up. And then startups on top of this can come and, and build the new, new creative, the new kind of Instagram on the blockchain, and the new kind of cool new things. So it will be its own blockchain, so it will have its own cryptocurrency. The problem with ESC20, and, and that's me saying it as being the one who proposed <laughs> the ESC20 <laughs> token standard, um, it is that yeah, I mean, the, the feature is that people can make a lot of new things, which they couldn't do before. But the other problem with it comes that now people, uh, because they want to make ICOs, create tokens for systems which don't need tokens in the first place. And I would actually like to see more that we are getting towards non-monetary tokens. Because this is where the real fun is happening. And we are building a separate blockchain, there's a separate token in order to secure the network and to incentivize the network. And um, like I said, having a uh, separate blockchain off, like, takes the load off the mainnet. Having this all on Ethereum basically does not. And you cannot run larger scale industry production use cases all together on Ethereum mainnet right now. And even with sharding, it won't be enough. So the most important things to think of right now is dispersing it on many blockchains uh, and thinking about architectures which actually don't use the blockchain but only use the blockchain as a security mechanism. 
It's also about creating an ecosystem for the fashion yeah. industry, for an industry that doesn't really have a clear future of how they will become relevant, relevant within the next 10, 15 years. And this kind of creates an ecosystem that provides perhaps a new future. I would like to see actually the blockchain space is moving towards business solutions and actually solving real world problems, which the decentralization uh, experimentation does. But I think we're now in the phase of doing the next step of bringing the actually old world also into the future. And that's what we are doing with Luxor. Yeah, so we have a website, but there's not much information yet. So it's luksoio yeah, it um, so. or they, they, they follow us on Twitter. Um, there will be more information coming out soon. Um, we are working on that, and uh, right now there's a lot of things happening in stealth. Okay.